was Judge Judy thick? So let's get into that. So that is and one of the things that I never expected to be questioning myself at the end of the day is was Judge Judy thick? So let's talk about that. So we are currently running a giveaway right now on the channel. Once we reach 30,000 subscribers, we'll talk about how that's going to work. So make sure you're subscribing, hit it in that notification bell right there. We just gave our giveaway winner their prize and they just received it. It was basically a gift card and also some posters and all of that. So if you definitely want to enter for that for the next one, definitely be subscribed to it that because this episode pretty much starts off with Darius and a lot of people were asking a Darius centered episode and we finally got it in the finale nonetheless I was happy to see Darius get some time so we follow Darius as he goes to a sensory deprivation um, appointment he has on the other side of things you have Al and Ern and Van going to try out this new restaurant Darius is going to meet them up later on and once they get to the restaurant Al is like wasn't this a blockbuster and Ern explains now it's like a sushi black owned restaurant and it's also something that uh, Van's friend sort of invested in. So it's kind of important to Van. Let's go ahead and do this for them. And Al's a little hesitant. He wants to go to Popeye's across the street. And Ern is like, no, we're going to go here and let's just give it a shot. Let's support a black owned business. So they go in, Van's there and everything. And Al is just looking at the Popeye's and just questioning. Now we have Darius, like I said, going to this sensory deprivation tank where you pretty much go into like water and you sort of sit there, I think with music and you soothe yourself out and it sort of has you feeling all of these things and sort of like a mental health thing as well, or like a new age type of way of trying to sort of make one with your uh, body and soul. And that's basically what this is the thing that Darius is here to do. Now, one of the things that Ern asked him earlier on is how do you differentiate when you're not in the tank and you're in the tank? And that's when Darius is like, that's simple. I just think of a thick Judge Judy because Judge Judy's always on the TV and we always see her the same. So if I think of her as being thick, then that means that I'm still in the tank because that's not how Judge Judy is in the show. And so that's how he's able to differentiate. So that's something you gotta keep in mind as you're watching this episode. And I'm curious to see if we go back to other episodes, do we realize if Darius is dreaming or not? And is this all a dream is the big question. That's the name of the episode as well. So we see Darius go through all of these different um, things that just don't make sense as he gets further into them, like one of them being picked up by London. And that interaction turns out wackier and wackier as we go down. And then it turns out he was in the deprivation tank. And then we see another one where he goes to visit his brother. And then he realizes that his brother's not there. And then he is. But then he realizes that Judge Judy is thick in the TV as well and that's how he's pretty much like yeah I'm still dreaming so we just see him waking up and going back to into the deprivation tank and this happens many many times and it's just all very much so wacky and surreal and the heightened reality gets heightened and heightened as we go into the episode with Darius on the other side of things we have Al, Ern, and Van who have a discussion and sort of a way of talking about how like if you're black or you could even say if you're another PLC Hispanic and all of that do you support the businesses that are trying to sort of be this Hispanic owned business and this uh, black owned business or any you could pretty much fit it to any culture about supporting your own people and helping them with their business or do you go to like Popeyes and something that's not owned by like a person or somebody that is like black owned or it is sort of um, instead of supporting the small businesses and um, your own people and all of this you go out and support the corporations such as Popeyes and all of that like what why are you differentiating between the two and you're sort of putting the other one above it and not giving the one that's trying to come up a chance I think that was a question that was being asked there and we see it turn into a little bit of a scary situation when the owner comes up to them when they're about to leave to go to the Popeyes because Van wants to go to Popeyes too and it's pretty much like why can I get the same cred when I try to do this food but if it's done by like let's say somebody like when you're trying to do a fusion and you're trying to sort of establish yourself in it you are sort of looked down upon it and it's like why am I being looked down upon it if this is the way it's done but it's just because I'm doing it and I'm being looked down on it and it goes into this whole thing because they don't want to eat this uh, poisonous fish that it is a real delicacy I think where you have to cut it in a certain way and if not you get poison all over it and you can poison your guests and Van, Ern, and Al are just like we don't want anything to do with this but the guy's pretty much pressuring them to take it 
However, then they are saved when Darius comes through in a stolen pink Maserati, as he says. When they get back home, they're eating Popeyes, and Darius explains that he just stole that car because it's all a dream. They're still in the uh, sensory deprivation tank, and he's going to wake up at any time, and they're just like, you're not dreaming, this is real, and they're just like, whatever, let's go and smoke, and he's just like, hold on, hold on, I'll go in a bit, y'all go ahead, I gotta check something out. So he turns the channel to Judge Judy, and we see Judge Judy about to get up, and this is where Darius is going to figure out if he's dreaming or not, and if he's not dreaming, he's probably in a lot of trouble for that Maserati, but just as Judge Judy does get up, we don't see what's on the TV, but we see Darius smile, so we don't know what happens here, so was Atlanta all a dream or was it not? I think that's up to you to decide, but it is going to be interesting to go back to the other episodes to try and notice subtle hints. Season 3 was a season full of episodes that definitely pushed the boundaries of what is real or what is not, and everything that happened in there just sort of felt like a surreal dream. And there was a lot of playing with dreams as well in that uh, season with Aaron. And I think for a series like Atlanta, this is one of the best episodes you can really end the series on because it really does push a lot of questions onto you about what is real, what is not, but also has that feel that Atlanta has always had with the heightened realities, the surrealism that's involved as well. And I think as well as the social commentary that we saw throughout with Van, Ern, and Al, which I think is a very important thing to discuss is, is this whole thing with supporting like local businesses, um, especially black owned businesses, um, like POC businesses, all of that, where you pretty much see them and trying to come up and thrive in this world. And you're sort of like, oh, overshadowing them because there's these corporations that offer things that have been sort of pushed down on everybody for years and years and generations and it sort of is hard for the little guy to compete with a corporation that's able to get their prices more down and sort of be pushed more into the masses through TV, um, mails, um, ads, all of that and I think that is a w very important question that one has to ask themselves is who are you supporting monetarily and you want change, you want differences to be made but at the end of the day where is your dollar going to and I think that's a very important question that a lot of people definitely have to think about. And I'm not gonna lie, I did want Popeyes after watching this. I was already eyeing it the other day and then I saw this and I was like that's my, that's, that, that, that's my um, sign, go get some Popeyes. But um, Overall, I did enjoy it. The question now to you is, do you think that Atlanta was a dream or do you think it was reality? I myself, I think that it was on and off reality and dream. I think that you could definitely go back to Atlanta and see it in that manner that all of these wacky, um, surreal, heightened reality uh, episodes like uh, Teddy Perkinson, um, also the whole Europe trip, all of that, it could have just been Darius's um, sensory deprivation tank that he was in, but everything else was real. And I think that's sort of how life is, is you have these scenarios that happen and over time they sort of get muddled and you get a little bit more of fiction in there as you tell these stories, because every time you tell a story, it definitely does change. You make it a little bit more dramatic, you have a little bit more flair in here and there. And I think that's how Atlanta works, is this is a true story. This is what really has happened, but then when you think about it back and you're writing it out or you're making it for art or for a film and all of that, you add a little flair to everything, and Atlanta definitely had those flares sprinkled throughout. So overall, do I think it was a dream? A yes and no. I think half of it was a dream and half of it wasn't. I think those heightened um, episodes that had a little bit of that surreal feel to it definitely were Darius in the deprivation tank, but overall, I think the story at its core is real. Was Darius dreaming? at the end it kind of felt like that at the end especially with the Maserati doing the donuts and everything and just at the nick of time Darius making it in there as well and also the whole thing with Popeyes throughout the episode Darius was watching a Popeyes ad at the time so it's kind of interesting when the episode started he's watching the Popeyes ad and then throughout the episode Popeyes is sprinkled in there throughout so it's kind of like when you go to sleep and you're dreaming and you see things on the TV and they sort of make their way into your dreams or if you leave the TV on and you're just listening listening they make themselves into your dreams as well so i don't know the episode could have been all a dream the last episode and could the whole series have been a dream possibly as well but 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it down below. Very sad, very much so bittersweet that Atlanta has finished, but I think it finished on such a high note that I'm excited to see where it goes. We will definitely be talking more about the previous seasons in this episode and more theories and more analysis on it. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell at the top right there. As always, that is going to do it for me. If you enjoyed me talking about Atlanta and everything, really appreciate you making it to all of the episodes, all of the breakdowns, all of that. We do talk about other stuff here, horror movies, all of that. If you want more of that, make sure you're subscribed. Notification bell on. I'll see all of you next time. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers at 30,000. We will do a giveaway, so make sure you're subscribing for that. As always, I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.